Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to check a new micro brushless quadcopter from Emacs. This is the Baby Hawk R. It comes in two versions, the plug and play and the binder fly one. The plug and play comes without any receiver so it means you will have to provide your own one and the bind and fly version comes with an FR Sky compatible receiver. As you can see, it states here two or three inches. Currently, as far as I know, the only version that is being sold is the two inch one, but Emacs are also going to sell probably a three inch one, and they are also going to sell separate arms that are going to convert the quadcopter from two inches into three inches quadcopter. You can also choose the color. Currently, the only version that is sold, at least in Banggood, is the black one, but they are going to release also versions that comes with red and transparent canopies. Inside this box, we're getting the quadcopter, two sets of Evan propellers. These propellers are tuned to work specially with Emacs motors. In addition, we're getting the OSD controller for the Foxeer micro aero camera and also a JST connector. So if you want to replace the XT30 connector, you can do it. I recommend to leave the XT30 connector, especially if you are going to run this quadcopter with 4S batteries. We also get in this bag with extra screws and the screws that will mount the propellers. And finally underneath we get in the instruction manual for the quadcopter and also the instructions manual for the Foxero camera. This quadcopter is featuring Emacs 1106 6000 kV motors. On the center we can find the Emacs Mini Magnum. So on the bottom we can find a 4-in-1 12 ampere BLLES ESC controller. On the center an F3 board and on the top a 40 channels VTX with a selectable output strength of 25 and 200 millivolts. Because I've got the bind and flying version we can find over here this Emax Tiny receiver which is working on D8 so in order to bind it with your Taranis you will have to put your Taranis on D8 channels 1 to 8 and later on in this video I'm going to show you how the binding procedure works. We can find this big capacitor on the center. This is a 330 microfarad capacitor and it kind of sticks to the side and I think that on a bad crash it might get disconnected. Maybe a better way to mount it will be to extend its legs and then to put it somewhere in the middle but on my test flight for now I'm going to leave it the way it is and only if it's going to get disconnected I'm going to reposition it. On the front we can find an excellent camera from Foxeer. This is the Micro Aero V2. I've used it before and I was very happy with its performance. The frame itself is a 112 mm carbon frame. On the bottom we can find this sticky pad. It will prevent the battery from slipping on the button. And by the way, if you break an arm, you will need to replace just one plate. So if you break one arm, you will need to remove the other one as well because these two arms are connected. But still it's not going to be a hassle and changing the arms should be a pretty easy process. The thickness of the bottom plate is three millimeters. And the weight of the quadcopter without the battery is 84.2 grams. Even though it's possible to bind the receiver and also set the bend and channel without removing the top canopy, I think it's going to be much, much easier for you to remove it in order to set everything up. In order to remove the canopy, you will need to remove these four screws that are located over here. And then just simply pull the canopy and there you go. Now I'm going to configure the VTX and bind the receiver. So in order to bind it, just put your Taranis on mode D8, channels 1 to 8, hit enter, and then connect a LiPo battery while pressing this button over here on the side. Then disconnect the battery, hit exit, and if everything went well, the quadcopter is now bound. You're not going to get an RSSI feedback on your remote controller. The RSSI feedback is going to be on channel 8. But if you want to see if the bind process was successful, just look on this LED over here. Now you can see that it's flashing green. And if I'm going to turn off my transmitter, now it was turned off and only this LED indicator is barely flashing. And if I'm going to turn on my okay. transmitter again, you can see that now this green indicator is flashing again. 
Setting up the VTX is described in the diagram over here. Basically, what you need to do, of course, after powering up the quadcopter, is to press this button over here for about five seconds. Then you can change between the band, the channel, and the power output. So if you just short press it, you switch between these three options. And then when you wanna change an option, just press this button for two seconds. So let's start with the band. Now you can select between A, B, E, F, and H. So you have five options. I'm going to set it on F. Then press this button for two seconds in order to exit this menu. Now let's set the channel. So again, press this button for two seconds. I'm going to set it on channel seven. Press this button for two seconds in order to save it. Finally, we can set the power output by selecting the P option press this button for two seconds, and then we can toggle between low, which is 25 milliwatt, and H, which is 200 milliwatts. And now we're going to save everything by long pressing this button for five seconds, and then it's going to exit the menu. Now we can see that selected band is F, channel seven, and you can see that this dot over here is on, which means right now it's on 200 milliwatt option. If it's going to be off, it means that you are on 25 milliwatt option. And of course, just before wrapping everything up, I recommend to check that everything is okay. And you can see that the FPV is working fine. The OSD of the camera is already turned off, but if you want to tweak the camera settings, you can also use it by just connecting the OSD control board to the extension cable over here. Now, after you made sure that everything is working correctly, you can close back the canopy. I already put back these two screws. And now you need also to choose your camera angle. You can tilt it around. And when you're done, just secure it using these screws over here. You can see, by the way, that the camera is protected, but I think that Emacs should have made this part a little bit longer and then it would have given the camera some more protection because still, if you're going to crush the quadcopter like that, the lens probably is going to suffer some damages, whereas if these two parts were a little bit extended, these parts could have protected it. By the way, I recommend you to go through all the screws because, for example, this screw was a little bit loose. You can see that this one is loose as well. So just fasten it in order to make sure it's not going to fall off in the middle of your flight. So just make sure that everything is properly secured. This F3 board comes already pre-flashed with Britaflight 3.2.2. So what I'm going to do next is just to go over the configuration, then take it for a test flight. And in the end of this video, I'm going to give you my conclusion. So I hope you will enjoy the rest of this video. Gentile, black man, white. We all want to help one another. 
human beings are like that. We want to live by each other's happiness, not by each other's misery. We don't want to hate and despise one another. In this world, there's room for everyone, and the good earth is rich. I had a great time flying the Emax Baby Hawk R and I think that currently this is the best ready to fly micro quadcopter that you can probably get. Unfortunately I didn't include the flight footage with the 4S battery because it wasn't recorded properly on my DVR but soon I'm going to release an upgrade video and then I'm going to include more flight footage using the 2S, 3S and also the 4S battery. Even though on the description of the quadcopter it states that it uses 3 and 4S batteries, I really enjoyed flying it with the 2S batteries, the quadcopter was very light and I could really fly it in tight places. So the only problem with this small battery that it's not going to fit well with this strap. So what I recommend to do is to replace this sticky pad on the bottom with this Dualock from 3M and then it's going to be more secured. What I did on my test flight, I just used a zip tie in order to make sure it's not going to fall off in the middle of the flight. The Baby Hawk came already pre-tuned and I think that the rates that were chosen were good as well. I had only two issues with the quadcopter. First is that the range of this micro receiver wasn't great. You could see that when I flew a little bit far, let's say around 150 meters, the RSSI dropped to about 35 or 40, which is too low. So in my upgrade video, I'm going to change it to a different receiver. In addition, even though the camera performed really well, the video transmitter wasn't great. And also when it reached about 150 meters, I had lots of noise in the FPV. So in my upgrade video, I'm also going to change this antenna and hopefully it's going to help because I don't want to change the included VTX. I think that the price point of this quadcopter is very good. The motors cost about $60 separately and then if you add the all-in-one stack that cost about $46, you reach about $106. Add the FPV camera which cost about $25 and you are at about $130. And finally, if you add propellers and the receiver, you reach about $150 without the frame. And so the price of $150 including the receiver, I think it's a great price and I'm also going to include a coupon that will reduce 8% which is $12 
So check the description and use the coupon if you want to get this quadcopter. As always, I thank you for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. If you have any questions about the Emax Baby car, feel free to ask it in the comment section below. Stay tuned because I'm going to post the upgrade video soon and I'll see you soon on my next videos. Goodbye.